Okay, thanks for attending this talk. Uh, troubleshoot interval with an error of your shoulder. Who has never heard about power up here? Okay, fair share. Who's never heard about Ansible? <laughs> of course. Uh, well, I realized recently that R is not a familiar term to uh, everyone here. So, who doesn't know what's an R in general at all? Okay, a few people. So, my name is Eichel. Uh, usually I go on IC by the nickname HDMR or number 18. So these are where you can find me under this nickname. Unless I, if I'm trying to sell you some pharmaceutical goods, that's not me at all. Just in case. So why I'm here? Uh, I'm contributing to the CentOS Classic. And uh, by my day job is uh, senior software engineer at Red Hat. Until yesterday, I was part of the OpenStack uh, release engineering at Red Hat, and now I moved to a different team. Uh, not something secret, but uh, probably not, not much of you know the DCI team over there. So, well, not dwelling, dwelling about that on that. And I'm self-proclaimed Chief Cloud Fairy at Red Hat. Don't ask me why. At least not in uh, uh, not when there is a camera running off. So what's an error? So for your general culture, in English you call that a Macau. So it's in, in, for error is a French name, but it's a very colorful, long-tailed parrot, and it's also a very noisy bird. So that's an error for your general culture, but otherwise it stands for ARA Records Ansible, which is a very handy Ansible plugin. And uh, it makes you feel like some space hunter discovering an ancient and powerful item <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> so yeah, if you were wondering on Twitter, this uh, is the team, Metroid. So just, a, just something to entertain me and force me to make slides. I'm trying to put some references to something. So for people who don't know what's Ansible, Ansible is a orchestration tool, not a configuration management tool, if you are a purist, because if I say so, people will just throw me a work set. If I say so, but some people use it as a configuration management one. So you have different modes, one is ad hoc, and I guess you can see uh, part of uh, the slides, don't worry, it will be online soon. Well, right after I finished with the talk. So the ad hoc mode is you use Ansible as a <coughs> command line, you just launch the Ansible command, and you say, hey, here's an inventory of all my nodes you, I need you to be able to contact with all the information you need to. And then, uh, dot .m for dash .m for uh, doing an action. First is ping web servers. So I want to ping all the web servers to see they are live. <coughs> uh, for Ansible, the ping is not a network ping. It's just a way to see if I'm able to contact the server and if he, I can receive an answer. And then, uh, the action I'm running that you cannot read is a uh, package, so I want to update the kernel package to the latest version on all nodes. So at the end I just say, hey, contact all nodes. All your nodes is uh, some kind of uh, placeholder for all the nodes available. But other, in the previous command, I just say web servers, which is the group I have defined in the inventory. So that's the first. Most of you started defensible using the edit mode. And then, well, you want to use Ansible some kind of, like a configuration management tool. So by defining states, I want my machine to be to have uh, these packages this service set up in some kind of fashion, so I want to describe this in a file. So most of configuration management tool define a domain service language, a domain specific language, DRGSR, 
But uh, Ansible tends to you just use YAML files, which is simple, readable by any human being, rather than using uh, some obscure Byzantine language like Puppet or CF and Giant DOS, and nobody knows for some reason. Uh, so it's really simple. It starts by defining all the nodes that uh, the plugin applies, and it can be a variable. You can have a variable uh, in your playbook. So that's how uh, Ansible goes for a recipe. recipe. <coughs> and then you define some options here, serials. So you try to serialize 25% of your playbook. And then you define a list of tasks. So the goal of uh, task okay, is uh, to define uh, the um, to define a um, atomic task, and you and uh, then you have uh, a task as a name. Then it uses a module. Here the shell, the first one is a shell module. I try to retrieve the confi kernel configurable uh, version. Uh, there are more uh, useful uh, modules to do that, but, well, then you register that in a variable, kernel config, so you can create on the fly variable based on uh, the machine tags, and uh, then you can also say, hey, if, it for, if it's false, then you say that uh, this uh, test changed something on the node, so the node can say, hey, this thing changed. It's really useful when you try to do need um, potent configuration. And then you can also enable blocks of tasks when you have some uh, events. Here uh, you check if uh, config Kaiser is uh, not in the kernel uh, output. If it's not, then you install the latest kernel to just to be sure, because you need that uh, feature to be in the kernel. And after that, you th you launch another test to remove the server just to have the latest kernel available. So you see, Ansible is very uh, uh, can help you define some tasks and just apply them. So this is fine. It's really handy, but then you see that uh, why Ansible got so popular. It's readable, really well, self-documenting. It allows you to do some ad hoc orchestration. You can leverage tags from the nodes. You can define also rows for compatibility. For instance, uh, you have some web application. You need a you can define a role for a Postgres server out of courtesy of for Postgres friend over there. So not say another database. You can uh, define a role to deploy Apache. You can deploy a role to deploy, to deploy a whiskey middleware if it's a Python application, and etc. etc. And this role can be reused to deploy a different application. And then your final playbook is just composing this role together and make sure things work fine. You also have handlers when you have some events. Let's say you have to, when you restart Apache, you want a <coughs> something to be uh, done, uh, let's say, uh, send a notification to the admin just to make sure that uh, he's aware of that. Ansible has some, um, some uh, different kind of plugins. Modules is a specific kind of plugin that we call action plugins, but uh, the main difference is our modules are something you can call directly in a playbook. Uh, unlike a uh, plugin, plugin can be a um, uh, connection plugin. Uh, let's say you want to use uh, Pigeon Carrier for Ansible, you can if you have the right plugin. But who knows? Maybe someone will do one. But when you run a plugin, this is the default output. Can I read more? But of course, you tell me this is a simple. Playbook with one, two, three, four tasks. Yeah, but in general, you have more than four tasks. And most of the time, you even have optional tasks or tasks triggered by events you don't always control. So, in the end, it looks like 
this and it's kind of confusing uh, especially if you retrieve the JSON output of Ansible here it's human readable but if you want to uh, do some processing you prefer using JSON and then <coughs> Just imagine when you're in context, like uh, in my previous role, working on uh, OpenStack, then you run jobs on hundreds of servers, thousand jobs, million lines of logs every time, and it's true nightmare to debug. Especially when you try to debug a project like Triplo. Who have ever heard of Triplo here? Okay. So most of you are safe. <laughs> because Triplo is like, I don't know how to call it in English, we call it in French a millefeuille, a thousand uh, leaf. It's kind of cake with thousand leaf of stuff. And it's lasagna, some kind of, it's a lasagna cake. And every time you have a failure, you try to pinpoint the layer that is responsible. And all you have are logs, and you hope that the logs register the reason that caused the failure, because it's not always the case. So being able to process log very quickly is quite important. And most of the CI jobs uh, run by uh, by OpenStack are run through Ansible. So being able to debug Ansible output is critical. So that's why uh, one of my co-workers, David Morris Mar, who was uh, tasked uh, with improving our CI, looked at the situation. And he was thinking, hey, Intel has callback plugins. Why don't we just leverage that and try to record Intel output in a database and make it somewhat more <coughs> easy to process, like we can put a nice web page or make it queryable or something, but <coughs> we just need something that registers all Ansible output somewhere and then we'll figure out something to process it. And, <coughs> and the thing is, um, this be simple approach, just using Ansible callback, take all the output, register this in the database, and then uh, uh, display it uh, in, a in a web page was so handy that uh, we did that originally for RDO, so which is a uh, rich distribution of OpenStack. That's the official name. Just kidding, but. Uh, yeah, the thing is, OpenStack uh, open infrastructure found it so handy that they decided to adopt this. So um, now, uh, when you go uh, to uh, OpenStack CI job and you want to debug this, you can just go uh, to you just click the link of the job and go to uh, the nice uh, HTML page generated by Hara, and then you can see. Uh, Task displayed, and you can fold them. Uh, it can show you uh, directly which task fail directly. So you know, oh, this is red. This is where I want to start off and stuff. So our made their life much simpler because imagine the average open source contributor has to debug like hundreds of jobs per day or at least a week, depending which project you're working on and it can be very tedious if you don't have such kind of tools. So, R is an open stack project. It's open source. It's a callback uh, plugin to Ansible to save logs in queryable database. So it's not some magic tool, uh, wizard tool or wizardry or something. It's also a command line interface to create a database. It's a web interface to deploy, to display its output in a clear way. And uh, since Hara 1.0, so which is not out yet but soon, there will be a REST API you can use very easily. So 
Now you're telling me, oh, you sold us a, a dream light too. How can you, I want to use it. Tell me how. I want to use this now. And it's easy. You can just pip install it. <coughs> and uh, if you're on Fedora, you can just use it. And you just need to, uh, oh, sorry. You just need to, to find out where R is registered. And you set it in a Ansible uh, environment, in var environment variable uh, that is used by Ansible, and just run Ansible. And that's it. You don't have to do anything else. Just tell Ansible, hey, I have installed this callback plugin somewhere. Just use it, and it will re register for you all Ansible output for you. And then, if you want to look at their output, you can just uh, run the server and go to the web page. Nothing else. It's really the least interesting tool you can use to uh, display and debug and seeable output. Really. Uh, you can also modify uh, and seeable uh, configuration file if you want to, but if you're uh, working in a company that doesn't allow you uh, to uh, do a much change on the uh, workstation, you can just uh, pip install her as a user and use it. Uh, and you use Ansible as a user and that's it. So, why? Because many people try to write tooling, but uh, when David started Ara, he thought of uh, some kind of guidelines in what he put on um, the Ara manifesto. Simplicity must be fundamental. Ara must do one thing and do it well. And it should also make, uh, help people to do their job, not try to feel it, learn the tool to do their job. And it doesn't require you to change your workflow. You just use Ansible as you do, and then you're not disturbed, you just get the output and just debug it. And also, like Ansible, it's decentralized, it, it works, it can work, you can use it offline and standalone by default. So, how does it work? So, Ansible provides some interface to write the code act, which is really simple. So, basically, the core of Ara is implementing these callbacks and just provide them. So you see it's not very complex. It's really, really elegant uh, software so plug into it. And then you can also provide, uh, you also have to pro and you provide that. And then you provide also a module if you want to use Hara in your playbook. So that's more intrusive, but that's well, let's say that's necessary if you want to register some uh, specific variable that your, uh, your playbook, the, the Ansible output doesn't output. Here we register the version of Git. Let's say it impacts your workflow and you want to uh, get uh, in the database uh, the, the Git version, you can do that. But uh, most of the time, you just use R as the uh, just to register the output and format it mostly for you. So, her main use currently is uh, with Zoom for kind of continuous integration and continuous delivery. But the initial uh, use case with Helio, it was quickly adopted by OpenStack. But uh, Zool is another project uh, made by OpenStack to run a very large distributed CI. Uh, initially, OpenStack <coughs> used Jenkins, but Jenkins didn't scale for the use. I'm not saying that Jenkins is not scalable, but for OpenStack massive users, it didn't scale. So they wrote Zool as a wrapper to Jenkins to distribute jobs across different instances of Jenkins. And on the end, they were just using Jenkins as a glorified drone. So they decided that, hey, maybe we can just make it make Zool simpler by 
just using Ansible to run the jobs and add the missing feature into Zo, and that's what they did. And but one thing people missed uh, from uh, Jenkins was uh, the nice reporting Jenkins had, especially with logs. And uh, from uh, for a CI tool, you expect to have some kind of basic features and nice reporting. So they decided to integrate uh, Hara here. So they're just using uh, Hara, the non the basic way to record the Ansible output and then use uh, this output to output uh, the job uh, the jobs result and help people to debug their issues. One specific thing I didn't mention that by default Ara used SQLite and Zoo decided to stick with it despite Ara can record in Postgres, MySQL or whatever that way is but is supported by SQLite can it work. But uh, it was also handy because when you are doing CI, the thing is you want to save uh, the artifacts from your job somewhere and being able to uh, use them. And they figured out that uh, since the database uh, for each uh, Ansible run was not that big, it was kind of useful to also save the database because you don't have to maintain a specific database for the output <coughs> and at some, after some time limit some time your job artifacts are less relevant so you can also delete them so you don't have to you can also delete the database uh, altogether with the other artifacts so you don't, you don't have to do some database maintenance uh, for that it increases performance and latency for a single re for a simple reason you don't have a single point of failure to take care of. And it's scale up for millions of playbook execution per month. And you don't have to care what happens if I have a power outage. And SQLite was just good enough. Remember, the error manifesto, simplicity. So, and uh, also, Hara is working on uh, the next uh, main release, 1.10. That has been on war for over a year. It's getting closer. But uh, what Hara with 1.0 will bring? It's growing into multiple projects because Hara initially was one package. So when you were installing Hara, you got the codec. You got the command line, you get the uh, small uh, ser server. Of course, it was small, but it was great bigger and bigger. And not everyone needed all the feature. So you have now uh, the plugins in our plugins that are more or less our core features. So if you just need uh, to record into the database uh, our, our uh, uh, Ansible output, you just deploy our plugins and then if you want to enter to query the database or output uh, query the database you just deploy our clients which can work all online and offline so you don't need to deploy our web for the web interface if you want to enter query the database uh, basically our clients we just trigger uh, an insulinous uh, small uh, API server for you and uh, then uh, the clients will query the, that uh, REST API, uh, that, uh, temporary uh, REST API and display the feature for you, and get the result for you. But the database is local. Of course you can deploy uh, the RS server if you want to uh, centralize uh, that feature somewhere rather than having multiple instances. Uh, you can have one single one and uh, one feature that is a ni nice touch is in our Ansible role era so you have now an Ansible role to deploy error so you don't need you don't have to install it manually you can just write an Ansible playbook to deploy error so you can use error for Ansible 
Well, what can we ask for more? And, uh, oh, not readable for you, but here, we, um, if you want to deep dive into this uh, in R.1.0, uh, David wrote some uh, blog posts from the latest to the oldest. So the first one is most about the, the main goals of R1.0. Um, um, the third one, sorry. The second one is a status update. And the latest one is uh, about the split, the project splitting. So uh, I recommend that you read that and I publish my slides uh, right after. <coughs> and uh, we, well, now I will take some questions, but I wanted to thank David Morosimar for printing ARA and helping me to prepare this presentation. Uh, well, the slides were shamely rip off uh, from his own, except for uh, the mid-trade uh, hints, because, well, that's, uh, that's my part. Um, also, uh, I'm also thankful because uh, when I was part of Open Factories Engineering at uh, Red ARA was very, very handy and useful. Like, it saved uh, those hours of work, it's really. And it saved the world uh, many times of uh, fellow open site developers. And I guess it will help uh, many people using Ansible uh, around the world. So, thank you, David. Uh, so, if you have any question. Okay. Oh, we have mine, so I won't have to repeat questions. <laughs> Several, but I will start with the first one. Uh, do you catch tags of Ansible tasks in that uh, recording? Can I like filter in, in when, when I'm parsing the uh, results and in the web UI? Can oh. I filter by tags like uh, source So, uh, you can do that by the command line. You can filter by text. Uh, not sure by the web interface. Uh, I must admit that uh, I haven't changed because they are rewriting this whole part in Django, so I haven't uh, looked at that part at all. But uh, in the current interface, you cannot. But with the command line, you can. Uh, yes. Uh, could you show uh, an AHA report so the UI? Uh, yeah, sure. I just need to get some network and. And do so. And since uh, the uh, captive portal is not friendly to me, I'll just use my connection. Jobs is 
one. So I can see uh, if I want the playbook. So let's say, oh, I don't remember what this playbook is doing. So I can look at it and it has even syntactic coloration, which is nice. And you have also the time forum. You have the, the various parameter, all the ansible facts here. <coughs> if you need to, you can look at the host. Um, you can look at the play and the task, which is the most important. So each task is a line. At the end, you have the status. In, in orange, yellowish, it's, uh, it says, oh, something changed. You may want to look at, but but it's not necessarily something bad. Here it's pale in red. Something when nothing uh, happens, it's red. And then you can look at the output at the end and start looking what the common plan. Here we are launching a common line, a common line tool called Dorian to build a package, and it failed at some points. Live debugging. Okay, it failed because uh, here it says it didn't find the network X module, which means that we are missing a dependency in the spec file. Okay, so uh, yeah, usually it would have taken me much more time to look at the Ansible files. Uh, Antibone output and a lot of time you have failure that are related here. I can focus on the task that failed, get the proper output of that task. It will already narrow the thing. Here uh, it's not a very, the best example because the run has a lot of output, but sometimes uh, you, can, you can just pinpoint in a few lines of log uh, where the issue, and that's it. But Already here, it's, it would have saved me like maybe 10 minutes of debugging. Yeah? So it's been a while since I would watch um, I tested Play with Aura. Uh, something I asked David in the past was is that possible to, to implement some filtering ish, um, some filters? In ARA to not report some of the sensitive things. Like, actually, you can, in the default standard kind of output of principle, say, no log equal true for the task, meaning that it's not showing up, especially if you have a nested list or whatever, to not show a password that is used for a task, for example. So, in the standard principle uh, output, it would be hidden, but Ava record everything, meaning that someone having access to a lot has access to everything, even outside of the when everything is kept. So, is there a way now to filter that out to just in your that to the callback plugin? Currently, no. Uh, we are working on a different project uh, by Coracle uh, Tristan. For, um, who is working on. Um, ah. Huh? It's uh, analyzing the log, okay, filtering sensitive information. So it's a generic tool for filtering logs. Well, uh, like log stashing. But at the moment, Ansible has a logstash callback in core, so you don't have to install anything, it's there. You can use logstash and then have a log filter and everything in searchable in Elastic Search, which in fact yeah. then defeat computer to the goal of Aura, but if that, that would be cool to have that also in Aura. Because if you are working in a team, sometimes people have, have access to the log just to see if something went wrong, but probably can't see the initial variable, um, which is credential. Uh, the thing is, it's not currently in the roadmap. I'm, I'm pretty sure that David has that in, in mind. Because, of course, we have also issues with sensitive information and he's very careful of not leaking password or private keys. So, we have a solution, but it's not integrated into our country. And um, for the longer answer, I suspect that it won't be in our 1.0. Because it's already uh, on the f is wor working out until finishing that, so you can f focus on more polish.
Okay. Well, I just wanted to concur with uh, what you said because uh, small disclaimer, uh, I'm a teammate of the Living Wars in Mars, I'm a writer yep. artist, and uh, the work I'm integrating is uh, explaining with uh, Dr. Lee, like, uh, the one that you showed, yep. and I do uh, the study of the new CI for uh, audio packaging, which is based on uh, NC1 of the books, and so it's uh, just amazing and uh, changes your life when you want to give them the NC1. I want to emphasize the fact that uh, if you work with very uh, complex uh, anti-book playbooks, long playbooks, it's not very, it's very cumbersome to web stream to do trials. And with ARA, you just have, uh, it's just two clicks at most. You can just look for the right, uh, the right path in the, in the report, and you know exactly what the ARA is. Yeah. And, and, uh, and the thing that is really, I want to emphasize this too, is it's really not intrusive. Like, uh, sometimes uh, I just visit uh, some friends and all in different IT companies and we are struggling with Ansible. I just say, hey, look, this is this plugin, just try it. Oh no, we don't have permission to install things and all. Yeah, you don't need to install anything. Just run Ansible as you do and do use install and just work. And most of the time, they're just fine with it. It was work. In some case, some people uh, needed uh, different features, but they're not difficult features to, to integrate. Like, uh, some people want to integrate with different kind of database, or record uh, facts, so that's why we have uh, the R modules. But really, if you, if you, uh, if you are an Ansible user, and uh, you can just now uh, go back at your day job and you can already try it out. And you have immediate gain in doing that. Any other question? Thank you very much.